You're listening to the Capitol Press Room, and we're going to unpack some of the environmental proposals in the Governor's State of the State Address. And to do that, we're joined by Julie Tai, president of the New York League of Conservation Voters, who in a former life was chief of staff at the State Department of Environmental Conservation. Welcome back to the show, Julie. Thank you for having me on, Dave. So we're going to talk about what the governor identified as some of her top priorities in a second, but let's begin by recognizing who the real important player here is, and that's Julie Tai and the League of Conservation Voters. So let's highlight your priorities. And one of the ones that attracted my attention was the idea of setting a goal for zero waste by 2040 in New York. So for starters, what does zero waste look like? Zero waste is intended to be that we're reducing the amount of garbage that goes to a landfill or incineration by 90%. Because that's really, we're not getting any value, in particular from a landfill, we don't get any value from the materials. So we're just wasting our resources. Um, New York City set this goal a number of years ago as part of its climate plan uh, to get to zero waste by 2030. They're far away from actually achieving that goal, but we know that this is really sort of an undersold part of our greenhouse gas emissions problem, right? Waste accounts for about 6% of the state's greenhouse gas emissions. Places like Long Island, they're about to have a garbage crisis, right? There's only one landfill. It only takes ash, the Brookhaven landfill, and it's going to be closing in the relatively near future because it's running out of space. So we really need to start re-looking at how we're treating our material. Because right now we've been living in a very wasteful society, right? We have a lot of single-use products that we use very quickly and then we toss them away. Rather than having more durability, we want to make sure that we're encouraging a more circular economy that will both not waste natural resources um, while also really reducing the amount of waste that, that we're sending to a landfill. And you mentioned this idea of zero waste being accounted for in terms of a 90% reduction. That's 90% from, what, 2022 levels, 1990, like when we use emission standards. What's the benchmark? No, the the benchmark would be from right now. We're not looking to go backwards. It's a little bit different than greenhouse gas emissions from that perspective. Um, We really want to see a meaningful effort that we're, we're drastically reducing the amount of garbage that we're sending to a landfill. And when it comes to waste, are there proposals that represent, I guess, low-hanging fruit that we should be identifying right now to reduce our waste? The number one thing that we need to deal with in this coming session, and the governor alluded to this in her state of the state, is we need to address packaging. Um, Really, you know, that has become a real problem We need to make sure that we're getting a a Waste Reduction and Recycling Infrastructure Act passed this coming year um, that will make sure that producers of paper paper and packaging waste take financial responsibility for the recycling of their products, Uh, making sure that we're creating incentives for them to reduce the amount of packaging that they're using in the first place, increasing the percentage of recycled content in the materials that they use. That's an incentive called eco-modulation, or basically the more recycled content you have, the less you would have to pay in order to uh, account for um, the need to recycle on the back end because you're creating a market. And that's something that we're really trying to encourage with this type of model is creating a market for the materials so that they have a place to go to at the end. We know that that works for certain types of materials already very well, like PET plastics can move around a lot, but we don't want to be encouraging the generation of virgin plastics out there. Um, So we really need a model that has a way for us to to transition to a much reduced amount of waste associated with packaging and paper. There was close to an agreement last year, um, but they weren't able to, to get that done. We're really excited to see the fact that both chairs have been talking about this. They know this is a very big topic for the environmental community, um, and we really hope that we'll be able to get something done. And we're, we're happy to see that the governor is once again proposing to advance something as part of the executive budget this year. You mentioned that this was something that was on the table in, in 2022, but ultimately there was an inability to reach an agreement between the, the three stakeholders, the Assembly, Senate, and Governor. Now, though, we've got new leadership in the Assembly and Senate environmental committees. Is that going to impact the ability of these three players to come to a consensus? Do you feel like the personalities here are more inclined, potentially, to 
reach a consensus? I, I think that we have a fresh start, and there's an opportunity in the fact that they both recognize, both you know, Assemblywoman Glick and Senator Harcum are, are well aware that this is a big priority. They both mentioned it in recent interviews that they've conducted, that this is something they want to take a, a hard look at and be part of uh, coming to a solution on. Um, and, and I think that the fact that this is a huge problem for local governments, I mean, we, we estimate that just in New York City alone, uh, they could save $75 million a year. I mean, that's real meaningful reductions in, you know, expenses for local governments. I mean, over the entire state, it's going to be much more than that. Um, so, so certainly we are hopeful that having, you know, this new session, continued leadership from the governor, interest from the two new chairs, that we're going to be able to get this done. So to me, this is something that, that got left on the table last year that really needs to address in this coming year. It's a big priority that we can really set the table for what this looks like in the country. And this is an area where New York can and should show leadership. Well, for listeners just joining us, you're listening to the Capitol Press Room, and we're speaking with Julie Tai, president of the New York League of Conservation Voters. And early on, you mentioned that New York City has set its own goals for zero waste, and while they're not necessarily on track to hit their targets, I'm curious if there's anything that they're doing in pursuit of this idea of zero waste that you think could be replicated elsewhere. So... You know, we just passed a bill yesterday called Skip the Stuff um, that doesn't allow food establishments to give you those plastic utensils or even, you know, the little packets of soy sauce and ketchup unless you ask for it. So we're starting to reduce the amount of materials that people are are just automatically getting without any thought. I don't know about you, but I have a whole bag of those utensils at home because when I get takeout, even though I repeatedly check the I don't want any materials box, they still come to me. Um, And so, you know, we want to make sure that we're reducing the amount of waste that people unnecessarily need. Um, that's that's something that's that's relatively um, low hanging fruit, so to speak. Um, but more importantly, they've they've started to do more food waste drop off for households and consumers. Um, there's a pilot program in Queens that has expanded organic um, throughout the entire borough, and we're certainly encouraging the entire city to have curbside composting collection. Um, and that's something that we know that the state is taking a look at. You know, a few years ago, the state passed a Food Waste Recycling and Reduction Act. Food is actually the heaviest and, and largest component of the, the waste stream that's out there right now. And we know that that's a material that they can turn into a usable product with soil amendments and with renewable fuels. Um, so it's, it's a very easy product to deal with, unlike some of the other materials that might be more challenging or may not have, you know, an economic market for them. This is something we know that we can use right away. Um, so we'd love to see the expansion of the, the Food Waste Recycling and Reduction Act. Um, right now, it's for very large generators of food waste. And we know that as that program continues to speed up and, and take hold, um, there will be more places for people to, to recycle their material. Yeah, for the threshold for food waste generators, if the state is interested in lowering that threshold to capture more producers, is that something where the legislature needs to step in? Or does the State Department of Environmental Conservation have the regulatory authority to just rewrite rules by what's uh, covered uh, under uh, food donation or, or recycling requirements? I think because right now that law only applies to generators who generate two tons or more per week on average over the course of the year. Um, I think they might need new authority, but I haven't looked at it that closely since I left DEC and was as engaged in writing the original law that got adopted. And in creating that law, there was the hope that it would spur the creation of more recyclers all over upstate who would want to take advantage of this law and the requirement that large generators recycle or donate food if they lived or operated within 25 or 35 miles of one of these recycling operations. Do you have a sense of whether these recyclers are popping up in a meaningful fashion around the rest of the state? Um, I think that's something that's going to develop over time. Um, I think that there is certainly there is certainly interest um, in doing more anaerobic digestion that would enable collection of those materials for a variety of reasons, um, and that's certainly one of them, the fact that we have a law that does this. We have a lot of municipalities that are also really thinking about this. 
including Westchester County. Um, I've had conversations with the town of Brookhaven, and certainly we know that the city of Albany, or Albany County, rather, has been interested to help deal with multiple waste problems, right? So to help deal with sewage sludge and their food waste. So certainly we're seeing more interest from the the private sector in this space, and I think that's going to continue as that law continues to move forward. If New York does want to achieve this zero waste goal by 2040, will New Yorkers be expected to change their consumption habits? Are there uncomfortable lifestyle changes that some of us might have to make? I don't know about uncomfortable lifestyle changes, but certainly, you know, we've we've been encouraging people in the first instance that they should reduce the amount of waste they're generating in the first place, right? So, you know, not using a plastic water bottle, for example. You know, I live in New York City. We have the best (laughs) public water in the entire country, if not the world. There's no reason to use lots of plastic water bottles in order to, to do that. But I think really what we'd like to focus on is making sure that the manufacturers and, and what the producers are putting into the to the market are in recycled containers and things that are easy to recycle. Because the more we have that market, the, the, the easier it is. And that really do we do need to wean ourselves off of using so much plastic. And there's there's a lot of ways that we can do that. I mean obviously we passed the Plastic Bag uh, Reduction Act a few years ago to reduce the amount of plastic bags that we have when we're doing our shopping and moving into into reusable. And that was not as much about, like when we were, we're talking about like fees on the paper bags, it's not about the money associated with that. It's about getting people to change their behavior. And it's not terribly cumbersome to do that. Um, so I don't know that that's a radical lifestyle change or an uncomfortable lifestyle change to do things like, you know, use a, a reusable water bottle or encouraging people to use more reusable coffee cups Um, and things like that. But certainly, we want to make sure that whatever goes into the into the market is recycled and recyclable. Um, Those two things will go hand in glove, and they'll they'll certainly increase the market that's uh, that's out there for those kinds of materials. Um, But really, we're dealing with it more at the, the producer level, the manufacturer level than we are at the consumer level. But we do need people to do a lot more recycling. I mean, people still throw out a lot of materials that are recyclable. We know that <laughs> that um, we only recycle about 17 or 18 percent of the materials that could possibly be re- recycled. So there's a lot of work that we can do, and we need to educate the public about what can go in recycling bins, so that they they're taking care of that appropriately. Um, that is really where where consumers and, and households will need to do some better work, is making sure that we're taking the materials that can be recycled and putting them in the recycling bin. Well, we've been speaking with Julie Tai. She's the president of the New York League of Conservation Voters. Julie, thank you so much for making the time. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me on. New Year from WCNY. Do you have a plan for 2023? As an act of care for yourself and your community, we are proud to share our partnership with Free Will, an online estate planning service that is 100% free for WCNY listeners like you. Free Will helps you write a legal will to protect your loved ones and assets in under 20 minutes at no cost. Kick off the new year by creating your plan. Go to freewill.com WCNY to get started.